Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of 1 Timothy. Yesterday we began to look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and Paul begins this chapter by reminding Timothy again of the importance of standing against false teachers in the church. He says we have these false teachers who are a great danger to the life of the church. He says they are liars and they are hypocrites. They are not truly people of faith. They are encouraging folks, he says, to abandon the faith. And this is a terrible, terrible danger. Why you must stand against it. He said their teaching is inspired by the teaching that comes from demons. And so you must stand against this false teaching. Now, as you read these words, and they are so strong, these words from Paul to Timothy, you begin to wonder, why would these false teachers do this? Why, why are there people in the church who would, who would teach falsehood and who would lead people to abandon the Christian faith? Why would they do this? What could possibly be their motivation? Paul references that in verse 2. Notice he says, these teachers are hypocritical liars. Their consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. Now, those are strong, strong words and gives us some idea of their motivation. Their consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. In other words, they have basically destroyed their conscience. This is why they are able to do things that are so contrary to the way of Christ. This is why they are able to lead people away from Christian faith, to abandon the faith, because their conscience is not operating any longer. You know, you know, it's the truth that, that when we deliberately disobey the Word of God, when we deliberately walk in ways that are contrary to the Christian faith, that affects our conscience, effectively searing our conscience. So actually we reach the point where we can do things that are totally contrary to Christianity with no trace of conscience at all, not feel guilty at all. This is the danger of continued disobedience to the ways of God. You sear your conscience so you no longer feel the pangs of conscience when you do things that are wrong. This is what had happened to the false teachers. They had begun to follow a teaching that is contrary to the Word of God. They had begun to teach things that are in opposition to the Word of God. They were leading people to abandon the faith, and it was not bothering them at all because they had seared their conscience. You see the danger of false teaching? When you first begin to engage in it, you may feel guilty about it. You may realize you're doing something that's not right. But if you continue in that way, eventually your conscience is destroyed and you no longer feel guilty. And you can actually lead people to abandon the Christian faith and not feel bad about it at all. That's what had happened to these false teachers. And that's what Paul says, they're, they're hypocrites and they're liars and their conscience is seared with a hot iron because they are not walking in the truth of God's word. That's why it's so important for us. So important for us to always hold to the word of God, to listen to it, to believe it, to follow it, to teach it. The false teachers had not done that, and so they are in a, a bad, bad situation. And so Paul says, do not allow them in the church. Do not allow them to teach in the church and counter them by teaching the truth of the gospel and the truth of God's word. And it's going to go on uh, in verse 3 and following to give some of the specifics of what these false teachers are teaching in the life of the church, which is so dangerous. He says in verse 3, they forbid people to marry and they order them to abstain from certain foods, foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. Everything God has created is good. Nothing is to be rejected. It is to be received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and by prayer. Now we had seen in chapter one that legalism was part of this false teaching and we see it pretty clearly here in chapter four as Paul says two of the things they teach is first that you can't get married. They say you must be single all of your life. They reject the teaching of creation uh, that God created Adam and Eve to be one together. He created Eve for Adam and he blessed and sanctified marriage. They reject that and say, you must not be married. You must live a single life. And so they promote this legalistic idea that only singleness is approved by God. And also they reject certain kinds of foods. 
Uh, they're probably uh, taking the dietary laws of the Old Testament and making them universal for all times and saying only if you've uh, refrained from certain kinds of food, and we'll tell you what those foods are, only then can you be holy before God. But Paul says, don't you know all things God has given to us are good if they are received properly with thanksgiving? All things God gives to us are to be received with prayer and consecrated by the word of God and that prayer. And this legalistic observance is not of the Lord. So, you see, they're leading people away from faith in Christ by preaching a form of legalism that Paul says is so destructive. And so he absolutely rejects it and says, do not follow that way, but follow the way of Christ and the truth as we have received it in the gospel of Jesus. Paul is so strong on this because he knows that if you follow those false teachers, you'll, you'll end up abandoning Christian faith. And that, he says, cannot happen. So hold to the truth of the gospel. Hold to the truth as you have in Jesus. Follow Jesus by faith through grace, and you will be firmly secure in the life of God. He continues this thought as he goes on in chapter 4. We'll look at this uh, some more in our next session. So join us next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of First Timothy. <laughs>